I'm sort of contemporary. I'm a con contemporary with Sodolo community. I came, I came to Tree Ratner Community FWBO as it was then a year later. And uh, I think the, uh, res uh, the, the talks on the Vimalakoti Najesha were still resonating very actively throughout the movement. And uh, I got involved in October 1980. And I think it must have been only a few months later that I remember sitting in the lounge of Ariatara community in Purley, listening to this man who I don't think I'd met at that time, maybe, maybe I had met him once, but I don't remember, um, giving this extraordinary talk uh, on uh, building the Buddha land. And I can even remember, I was just thinking about it earlier, I can even remember where I was sitting in the room when I was listening to this talk. And the thoughts came into my mind, this is my teacher. Um, I don't think I had necessarily any conception of needing a teacher, but if I did, this was my man. And when you think about um, how the FWBO came into existence, Tree Ratner community as it is now, it is miraculous. When you think that this one man in this basement in Monmouth Street in London, started teaching meditation to this miscellaneous bunch of hippies in the late 70s. And now here we are in the Shrine Room uh, listening to us comment on his extraordinary talks. And not only that, when you think of the worldwide Buddhist movement that has arisen independence upon Sangharachita Bhante's uh, well, I didn't say his, his, his insights. Um, you can't help feeling that there must be something going on amongst us. There is something that we are uh, participating in. And uh, I'd like to think that what we are participating in is a great adventure, a really, really exciting adventure. And we're all part of it. It's not just the order members, everybody. Everybody who comes to Tri Ratna is part of this, uh, this miraculous uh, manifestation of the Dharma in the modern world. And I truly believe that. And I feel in many ways, I can honestly say I'm, I'm as excited now about the project of Tree Ratna community as I was when I first stepped through the door of Ariatara community in 1980. So I think that must be some testament to the spiritual vitality of Sangharakshita's uh, ability to communicate the Dharma. And for me, my connection with the Dharma is very personal. It's, it's very much to do with the communication that I've received. I was gonna say through Sangharakshita, of course, primarily through Sangharakshita, but for everybody I've come into contact with. And I think in a way, this is the eth essence of Arthacharya. It really is. Uh, this wave of spiritual vitality uh, that each of us can participate in and pass on to other people. And I think all of you will feel this. All of you will have had some experience of this spiritual vitality. Um, you wouldn't have stuck around. You wouldn't have asked to become mitras. You wouldn't have asked for donation. Or you wouldn't have become order members unless you had some direct experience of this spiritual vitality. And what I'm going to suggest to us is that uh, we, our, our duty, our responsibility as trainee bodhisattvas, because let's face it, let's call a spade a spade as it were. When you come to Tree Ratna community, when you stick around Tree Ratna community, you are saying that you want to participate in the bodhisattva. You want to become like a bodhisattva. Of course, Banti says it's not that we literally become the bodhisattva, but somehow we participate in the bodhisattva. We, we become a hand of the bodhisattva. And this is very much what Artacharya is really about. It's about becoming a hand of the bodhisattva. It's about participating in this extraordinary spiritual vitality that of course originally comes from, from the Buddha, but essentially comes from uh, from the deep, and I would say profound, spiritual realizations of our teacher and founder, 
Sangharachita. And uh, in this particular section on Artacharya, one of the elements that Bhante chooses to home in on as a quality uh, that uh, we are inspiring others with is, uh, he says, and he says, it has been said that inspiration is the single most important factor in the whole of the spiritual life. So inspiration is the single most important factor in the whole of the spiritual life. And I, I would, I'm going to propose that all of you are inspired individuals. You may not always feel inspired, but I think if you look below the surface, if you, and you're maybe in your quieter moments, you will realize that on a level, maybe that you don't even consciously sort of articulate to yourself, you are inspired. And I think that's what we're trying to live from. We're trying to live more and more from that level of inspiration that we have. And we're trying to pass that on to other people. And it's a bit like taking a flame and lighting the candle of another, of, of the soul. I'm gonna use the word soul. I know it's not a Buddhist word, but I'm gonna use it anyway, to ignite the soul of another being to set fire to their inspiration. That's what our duty is as practicing Buddhists, I would say. Of course, we're trying to develop ourselves. Of course we are not, that, that's absolutely taken as, as basic. But because we're uh, practicing, let's say, within the Mahayana perspective, the Bodhisattva perspective, we have to therefore say that our inspiration is, is something that we are passing on to others. So I want to I want to give us three little li, little precepts that you might want to take notes on. There are, there are three things that I think we need to do, and they are get get out, help out, and give out. So that's get out, help out, and give out. So what do I mean by these things? Um, I can't remember who it was. I think it might have been Mike Tribandu, actually. He said that the single most important contribution we have to the world is to turn up, which is, well, sounds incredibly sort of like ordinary and mundane, isn't it? Turn up. Take your body and place it in the presence of other inspired individuals. You do not have to be special. You do not have to have wonderful qualities, although I'm sure you have. But the, most, the single most important thing that we can do, of course, it's a bit difficult at the moment because of COVID, uh, but here we are, we've turned up, we, we, we've, got, we've got out, is to turn up to wherever you feel uh, the Dharma is being taught and just to be noticed, just to be present. Don't underestimate the power of your being. Don't underestimate the power of your presence as just an ordinary committed human being you have something to offer the world. And I think this is absolutely essential, especially in the modern world. I think one of the biggest problems we're facing at the moment is that people don't feel they have agency. And when people don't feel they have agency, they, uh, they go to reactive states of mind. They become defensive and small-minded. And I think we have to, we have to work against that. We have to feel that we are agents and that we have an effect in the world. So get out, get out to wherever you can uh, to be with other, um, other Sangha members when you can. Of course, at the moment, that's very difficult. And the other one is help out. Um, make yourself available, put your energy towards helping create conditions in which people can participate in the Dharma. And so that might mean joining an online study group, um, helping out at your local centre, uh, finding ways that you can basically help out in whatever way. I can remember there was a guy that used to come along to our centre in Croydon when I was in the Croydon centre. And for about five years, he would come and stand in the bookshop. We had a bookshop there where we used to serve tea during the, the break. He hardly ever used to say anything. But every week he would make the tea. And we hardly, we hardly knew him, he hardly ever said anything, but he, he made the tea. He's an order member now. I'm not going to say who it was, but um, he, he, just, he just was there all the time. So uh, that is a contribution, just turning up, making the tea. 
And your inspiration, don't underestimate just what you do, your, what your contribution is. And the, and the, and the, uh, the third one is, it's, maybe it's a bit provocative and it's called give out. And of course, usually when we say give out, it's just, it's just uh, it means uh, giving out is quite negative, isn't it? You know, oh, this bloke's giving out to me, you know, to me. But I don't mean it like that, obviously. Uh, give out means uh, get out, give out, give the dharma. So, uh, so yes, g give out, get out. And I think we were talking earlier on in our group today, we thought that probably one of the things that we need to look at in the movement is providing more opportunities for more people to feel that they can be agents of what I call agents of the Dharma. I don't think, I mean, I was very lucky in Sadaloka and those of us that came along in the early days, there was so much opportunity for us to join in, to actually join in and actually feel that we were contributing to building uh, the tree rat and the FWBO community in those days. It's, I, I realise these days it's more difficult. And I would urge all, uh, you know, this is something for the movement, but I would say that all centres should be looking towards creating new centres. So all centres should be looking towards doing outreach and actually creating more opportunities for more people to feel that they can contribute to, to spreading the Dharma. Because I think that, um, yeah, anyway, you know, there should be, there should be 15 centres in London. Uh, we should be doing much more in the area of taking the Dharma out to the world. So um, those are my three points. Get out, i.e. turn up, help out, join in, and give out, uh, give, give the Dharma. Okay, so we're coming to the end now, and there's just some questions I'd like you to ask your, of yourselves. Um, during your uh, during the group, if I can find them somewhere. Um, I'd like you to uh, examine yourself, and I'd like you to ask some questions. Um, first of all, what inspires me? I think it's really important to. Remind yourself what your sources of inspiration are. So that's the first question. What inspires me? And this might be slightly, this is a slightly provocative one, but it's one that I've talked about before. It's like, what do you do with your evenings? I think that uh, so many of us, I would say, are actually addicted to our, our, little, um, our little devices. And we fritter away so much of our lives fiddling around on our iPhones and on uh, Netflix and goodness knows else what we do. So I would say to all of you, do another Dharma class. If you do one, do two. If you do two, do three. Do more Dharma work. Join in wherever you can. Take that evening period. And I'm recently calling it, you know what they think called the bardos, the bardo of life, the bardo of death. But well, I think we've got the bardo of the time after supper before bedtime. I know it's a bit of a mouthful, but you understand what I mean. It's that time where we're just inclined. I know some people don't do it. Apparently, Sudden Andy doesn't do that at all. I'm really, it's incredible, Sudden Andy. I don't know how you manage it, but you should tell us. You should tell us how you do that. But uh, we do, don't we just fritter our time away? Is that a good use of a Bodhisattva's time? Should we not be thinking about joining in with some Dharma work? So we can all do that. So I'd like you to think about your evenings. I'd like to think, I'd like you to do a little critique of your own time in your evenings. And the last thing I would say is, do you value yourself? Do you value your contribution? Um, because I think, I mean, my own experience is that unless you've got someone who kindly tells you how much they, you mean, it's very easy just to overlook your own good qualities. So I'd like you to do a bit of a stop take and I'd like you to think of yourself as a bodhisattva and congratulate yourself for your positive qualities and realize that this is what you're depriving the rest of the universe of. If you don't go and do Dharma work, we're going to be deprived of those qualities that you, you have. So please, let's have more of your 
bodhisattva qualities and be inspired. So these are the points I'd like to make on this current talk, Artacharya. Thank you.